Once again, Christian greetings to all our valued listeners, viewers throughout the whole world, more particularly to all Shepherds Rod believers, and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Special greetings to our brethren in Colorado, to our brethren in Georgia, in Fiji Island, Mexico, Spain, in Africa to the United Kingdom, and to also to our brethren in Australia, and to the rest of the 144,000 living saints scattered abroad, greetings, and may the good Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. This is our episode number 27 in the subject, the 12 figurative months, and I would like to begin our study on the reading material, a lecture on the typical Sabbaths and Great Jubilee on page Page 12, it says, This text is a prophecy of Isaiah, delivered by the prophet about 700 years before Christ was born, whom he personates in this remarkable manner, and was the first text used by our dear Savior when he began his public ministry at Nazareth, where he was brought up. He then read a part of our, th of our text, closed the book, and sat down. All the eyes of them which were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 21. He did not say it was fulfilled in their sight, but in their hearing. And here on page 13, it says, I will now show what is meant by the acceptable year. It is the year when captives go free and those bound in prison are loose. The prophet evidently alludes to the sabbatical year among the Jews, which was a type of this year spoken of in our text. Isaiah alludes to this time on uh, chapter Isaiah, I don't know how to exact numbers this one, 49 verses 8 to 13. It says, we have an account of this typical year. First in Exodus chapter 21 verse 2. If thou buy a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. So it was illustrated, brothers and sisters, as the year of release according to such historical event. Now, let us focus our attention to the Shepherd's Rod publications concerning Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. Now reading 1SR on page 153, the first verse and part of the second apply to Christ himself at the beginning of his ministry. The spirit of prophecy says it will repeat itself with the people of God. This would find its fulfillment in the time of harvest. With the 144,000, those who escaped the ruin of Isaiah 59 and 63, by whose effort the great multitude of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 is made. So here the shepherd's rod plainly telling us that Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2 is applied to Christ himself at the beginning of his ministry. But accordingly, these two prophetic verses will be repeated again with the people of God. And this would find its fulfillment in the time of harvest with the 144,000. Now, let us read to TG number 13 on pages 10 and page 11. To TG number 13, pages 10 and page 11. It says, Who else then? Can the star and the locos represent but Christ and the Christians? Satan had shut up into the bottomless pit the entire Jewish nation. The only nation that had previously been out of the pit. Christ therefore came to open the pit and to let the captives go free. To such a world was the Lord of heaven sent. And when he came, he immediately declared, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke 4, verse 18 and 19, because he hath anointed me 
to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are browsed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Here you have it in inspiration on code of mysticism, freshly unveiled that Jesus Christ is indeed a heaven-sent being, the Savior of the world. Now the plain fact that the Christian era began with the sounding of the fifth trumpet, the truth of the first four trumpets must be sought in the Old Testament era. 2 TG number 13, pages 10 and page 11. Now I would like to repeat again that Jesus Christ plainly declared in Luke chapter 4 in verse 21 saying and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears jesus christ did not say this day is this scripture fulfilled in your sight but rather in your ears luke 4 verse 21 for the perfect fulfillment of that prophecy will find its perfect fulfillment according to a reading in 1SR 153. In the time of harvest with the 144,000. Now, let us read again the statement in The, the Desire of Ages 240. It says here, When Jesus in the synagogue read from the prophecy, he stopped short of the final specification concerning the Messiah's work. Having read the words to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, he omitted the praise and the day of vengeance of our God. Isaiah 61 verse 2. We all know that the reason why Jesus Christ omitted the praise, the day of our vengeance, the day of vengeance of our God is that that prophecy did not find its fulfillment on the first advent of Jesus Christ. For in the perfect fulfillment, immediately after the acceptable year of the Lord is completely ended, immediately follow the day of vengeance. And this was not true on the first advent of Jesus Christ. Here in 1SR 154, it says, The day of vengeance in Isaiah 61 verse 2 follows the year. The day may be prophetic, which in that case would mean a literal year. Thus, it would mean a year in its case. This year of vengeance is not the seven last plagues. Nor is it the destruction of the wicked at the second coming of Christ. It takes place before the close of provision. For in the fourth verse we read, They shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. The meaning of this verse is to restore the truth of God, which has been trodden down underfoot for many generations. The 144,000, the true Israel of God, are the builders. Thus we see that after the day of vengeance, God's truth is to be restored and revealed to the people. Therefore, it must be before the close of provision. The balance of the chapter confirms the same thought. The day of vengeance is the same as in Ezekiel 9, Isaiah 63. And Isaiah 61, as previously explained. Verse 6, meaning the 144,000, says they are priests, as explained on pages 37 and 38. 1 SR, page 154. Now, the voice of inspiration says that the day of vengeance is the same as in Ezekiel 9, also Isaiah 63. And it was also mentioned in 153. Those who escape the ruin of Isaiah 59 and Isaiah 63. What is the ruin in Isaiah 59? And what is the ruin in Isaiah 63? Now let us connect one subject to the other. Now I would like to read answerer number 4. Answerer number 4 on page 20 
2 and page 23. It says, the first part of the verse, that is Isaiah 63 verse 1. The first part of the verse applies to the first advent of Christ. The same with Isaiah 61, right? And the last part to the time of the purification of the church. So the last part of Isaiah 63 verse 1 is applied to the time of the purification of the church. Now let us try to read many important portions the purification concerning the purification of the church. Now I would like to continue reading. In answerer number four, page twenty-three, and then it says, "And that whoever continues, that is concerning in the period of the purification of the church, that whoever continues to hold his people in bondage and in ignorance of his truth, will he tread in his anger and trample them in his fury and?" Sprinkled their blood upon his garments, thereby staining all his raiment, and thus setting his people free. Answerer number four, page twenty-two and page twenty-three. Now let us connect our reading on two Azar. In two Azar, page one hundred one, the shepherds had also connect Isaiah sixty-three from verse one, then verse four to six. So let us read, and you can read. The entire page, but I would only pick up those portions by which closely connected to our subject. I would like to begin on page one hundred. If God's ideal is to bless the world through the medium of His church on earth, and they to whom the gospel for the world is committed have left the ship and are serving the devil in the person of themselves, where is the hope of the world? Let us focus on that statement. Serving the devil in the persons or in the person of themselves. Uh, I would like to brought to you in the first advent of Jesus Christ because that is the groundwork. Thus, the Jewish people, the scribes, the priests, the Pharisees, Sadducees. Would you think they thought that they were serving the devil? And how about the people who are looking unto them? Would you think that is their observation that the priests, the scribes? They were serving the devil in their sight. They are the most righteous, and that is why the the shepherds would remind us. I would like to read this reading in two T G. It says here two T G number I think number forty one. The shepherds would say is that no, in the first advent of Jesus Christ, there is no group of people by which very religious. It says here in two T G forty one page eight. The world has never seen. A more religious group, nor a more praying and pious people than were the priests, the scribes, and Pharisees in Christ's day. So very religious, praying people, pious people. Yet they were the very ones who protested against Christ's teachings, who spread prejudices and confusion among the people, and who keep them in darkness. Yes, they deceived a whole nation. Two T G forty one, page eight. I would like to emphasize, brothers and sisters, that of all the verses in the Bible, the the word "sure word" is attached to the prophecy because prophecy will never tell a lie. In I remember in track number twelve, it says on page fifty nine, track number twelve, page fifty nine. Thus, the more sure word of prophecy, which never fails to tell the truth, track number twelve. Page fifty-seven, rather. Track number twelve, page fifty-seven. Thus, the more sure word of prophecy, which never fails to tell the truth, the mere fact that the prophecy, the word of God, plainly told us that it is a sure word. Prophecy should be the foundation of our faith, according to Evangelism, page one hundred ninety-six. Now, in the prophecy recorded in the Bible, for example, I would like to read two answer. On page sixty-nine, the dragon with his seven heads and ten horns, with the crowns on the heads, appeared at the birth of Christ, as previously explained, and occupies the period parallel with the nondescript beast. The heads are represented by the biblical number seven, meaning completeness. 
and embrace every religious system in the days of Christ. As the dragon represents the devil who controls the heads, the symbol unmistakably denotes a complete apostasy. It is not intended to reveal that the pagan system of worship was heeded by the devil for it has never been otherwise. It was the Jewish church that had apostatized and that is what made the biblical number seven heads. To Azar page 69. So what does it mean by the seven heads of the red dragon? It represents that the entire Jewish nation had been completely conquered by the devil. But if you will base your analysis to your finite observation, it's hard to believe that the Jewish church describes the policies, the, the rulers, because according to the shepherds, they were very religious, praying people. It seems that their dignity cannot be questioned. But I would rather believe the word of God, the prophetic word of God, because prophecy is a sure word. It will never tell a lie. But the absolute fact is that that description concerning the red dragon, it was written in 96 AD and it was completely finished in 98 AD. By which, in reality, they had not been profited with such writings because in their days, it were not yet in existence. And the Jabbers Rod plainly told us here in 2SR page 111, it says, The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation were written especially for the generation living at the time of the end and not so much for the Roman world. They had no understanding of the writings that pertain to the last days and thus could not have profited by them. How much more in the time by which such books were not yet in existence on the first advent of Jesus Christ. And that is why the shepherd says, I would like to read this reading. In answerer number one on page 16, Be not like the Jew, but open your heart, cast out its pride, its prejudice, and its self-conceit. Let this not deprive you of eternal life at such a late hour as this. If you repeat the mistake of the Jews, your shame and your loss will be as much greater than theirs, as are your light and your opportunities and privileges. Yeah, beyond comparison. Answerer number one on page 16. The Bible called the testimony of Jesus as a true witness. According to Revelation 3 verse 14, the true witness, that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will never tell a lie. And that testimony of Jesus Christ are the writings of the Spirit of Prophecy and the Shepherd's Rod Publications. Now let us study closely, brothers and sisters, the Shepherd's Rod Publications. Now let us go back again to 2SR, page 100 and 101. If God's ideal is to bless the world through the medium of His church on earth, and they to whom the gospel for the world is committed, have left the ship and are serving the devil in the persons of themselves, where is the hope of the world? Why is it that the voice of inspiration emphasizes the place where? Because the question where indicates place. Where is the hope of the world? Plainly indicating that the only remaining hope of the world is the 11th hour church. So that question can be easily understood. Where is the 11 hour church found or located? Because that is the statement in the voice of inspiration. Without the 11th hour servants and message, the church would be left sleeping forever. Never to behold the feet of him who bring this good tidings of him that publicity peace, and never to put on her beautiful garments, never to be fitted for the kingdom. 2 TG 43, page 12. And the voice of inspiration plainly declared, brothers and sisters, that God purposes that this movement must stand. It says here, in answerer number one, page 68, Indeed, in the very nature of the case, the 11th hour movement must triumph for being the last 
the one to garner in the harvest, then should it fail. Everyone in the world today would forever remain lost. Double therefore are the reasons that the Lord purposes it to stand. Or in other words, if God will allow, if God will permit the devil that such church, the 11 out church will be defeated by him, then the whole world will lost in oblivion. Brothers and sisters, that is very plain. But the question, where is the hope of the world? To repeat again, if the question would be, what is the hope of the world? The gospel. They need the gospel. The voice of inspiration says, here in 1 SR 255, it says, In view of this unrushing torrent of apostasy, heeded by mislead spiritual guides, in my estimation, the Leopard Beast of Revelation 13 verses 1 to 3 has met a most striking fulfillment of symbolical prophecy. All the world wandered after the beast. The world in general has always been after the beast. For this reason, the world is in need of the gospel. They need the gospel. But what gospel that the world needed? Now, I would like to read track number 5. Then we'll go back to the reading in 2SR. Here in track number 5, on page 60 and page 61, it says, Christ's mission being to bring deliverance from the prison house of sin and of death. The bottomless pit, so the bottomless pit is the prison house of sin and of death. Track number 5, page 60. And to do so through the preaching of the gospel, the K. So the preaching of the gospel, the K, that is the K. Therefore, must be figurative of the gospel, the only power that is able to set free those who are in prison in the bottomless pit. So what is the K to open those who are in prison in the bottomless pit? The gospel, the preaching of the gospel. But what gospel? The shepherd's rod plainly declared in 2SR 266. It says here, only by the gospel proclamation through that spiritual house can God save his people. 2 SR page 266. Now let us continue reading track number 5, page 60, page 61. Since the bottomless pit of Revelation 20 verse 3 is symbolical of the earth as a prison house during the millennium, then the bottomless pit of Revelation 9 verse 1 being identical must likewise be symbolical of the earth as a prison house at another time remember brothers and sisters it says revelation 9 verse 1 what is revelation 9 verse 1 the very first description of the fifth trumpet now we explained several times that in studying the trumpet study, let us distinctly separate the groundwork and the particular object in view. Now, the particular object in view, according to the shepherd's rod, in track number 5, on page 32 and page 35, I would like to read page 35. Naturally then, the first seal must precede the first trumpet, the second seal, the second trumpet, and so on. And the mere fact that the fifth trumpet, according to our reading in 2TG, number 13 on page 11, saying, Now the plain fact that the Christian era began with the sounding of the fifth trumpet, and it even began at the birth of Jesus Christ. But the fifth seal commenced in 1500 AD which is contrary to the proper application of the prophecy. Because the fifth seal must precede the fifth trumpet. But accordingly, in 2SR page 221, I would like to read the statement, the fifth from 1580 to 1755 AD. Summary of commencement and termination of seals. Then that occurrence could not be the particular object in view. But rather, that is only the groundwork. Now let us read Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. 
and to him was given the key of the bottomless pits. Revelation 9, verse 1. Now, this is the question. Track number 5, page 26. Symbolical or literal which? Only when this question is rightly answered will we have the key, the correct interpretation to unlock this great symbolical treasure house of truth. In page 41, it says, For if every term is not symbolical, how shall we differentiate those which are from those which are not? And how shall we know by which to define the truth? Therefore, the subject of the seven trumpets Every term must be symbolical. Therefore, the earth mentioned in Revelation 9 verse 1 must be symbolical earth, not literal. And our subject is Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2, Luke 4 verse 18 and 19, which is closely connected to our subject. Because Luke 4 verse 18 and 19 is pointing to the bottomless pit. And it does not find its perfect fulfillment on the first advent of Jesus Christ for many reasons. First, it is contrary to the proper application of the prophecy because the shepherd's rod made it so plain, the fifth seal must precede the fifth trumpet. But it was reversed. The fifth trumpet precedes the fifth seal. Second, every term must be symbolical. Palestine, the Jewish nation, never symbolized by the earth, but rather symbolized by the sea. Now I would like to read track number 5. It says here, page 45, the second trumpet in page 44, Revelation 8, verse 8 and 9. So the great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And then it says, after the mountain was a fire, it was cast into the sea. The sea, the storehouse of the waters, represents the original abode of peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Revelation 17, verse 15. Hence, while it stands for the world as a whole, the place wherein the nation's water reside is definitely localizes the place wherein the church's mountain appears. This is borne out by the prophet's word, Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, where the world originated, Palestine and all that is therein, Isaiah 42, verse 10. So that is very plain. Palestine, represented by sea, never represents the earth. And that is why, brothers and sisters, the statement in 2SR 215 saying, let's read the statement uh, given by uh, the voice of inspiration here, that accordingly, brothers and sisters, at page 201 rather, it says, this book contains the names of the saints and the seven seals comprise prophetically the world's history during which time the saints are sealed. These seven periods of unfulfilled history sealed the book and the only one that could open it, see into the future, was the Lamb. Unfulfilled history, meaning the history is not the perfect fulfillment of the prophecy. The description was not perfectly portrayed in the past because that is not the particular object in view. That is only the groundwork. In track number 5, on page 34, it says, let's read the statement. Fulfilled prophecies are seen, therefore, to be employed by the scriptures only as groundwork for that part of prophecy which is yet to be fulfilled. So we are now studying the perfect fulfillment of the prophecy. Now let me read to you 12 symbolic code number 2 on page 7 and page 8. Our next step is to ascertain who the locusts are and when Christ released them from the bottomless pit. So when does the time that Jesus Christ released them from the bottomless pit? The locusts. Now let us read the statement. It says, in Revelation chapter 12, we have a description of the dragon. At the time Christ was born, he had seven heads and ten horns, signifying that all the kingdoms, ten horns of the world, and all religious, and all religions, seven heads, were serving the dragon. So the description cannot be mistaken. All religious aspects were serving the dragon, as well as the ten horns. According to the voice of inspiration. And that is illustrated on the first advent of Jesus Christ. And then it says, 
Had he not conquered the Jewish church, had he not conquered the Jewish church too, he could not have had seven heads. When the dragon conquered the Jewish church, God's people at that time that gave him seven heads. The very fact that the Jews were the ones who had Christ crucified furnished the evidence that the Bible correctly pictured them exactly where they were with the dragon. Now, since we are studying trumpet studies, let us distinctly separate the literal crucifixion and the spiritual crucifixion. Now it says, seeing then that the devil had all the religions of the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth represented by the seven heads and ten crown horns on his head. What beast represented by ten crown horns? There is no other except the leopard like beast. That is the only beast which had ten crowns. Now let us read again the statement. To symbolic code number 12, page 7. Seeing then that the devil had all the religions of the earth. That is very plain. All the religions of the earth. Does this earth, brethren, the literal earth? Then if that is the case, then there is no church of God at all. Which is contrary to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because God has a church in all ages. I would like to read that reading, uh, brothers and sisters. In 6 Bible Commentary, 6 B.C. 1079, it says, 6 B.C. 1079, Christ has a church in every age. 6 B.C. 1079, and we know the word every meaning in all ages. Here in Prophets and Kings, 714, it says, Never has the Lord been without true representatives on this earth who have made his interest their own. These witnesses for God are numbered among the spiritual Israel and to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to his ancient people. Never has the Lord been without true representatives on this earth. As a matter of fact, the shepherds drug called it the ever-living church of God. Here in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 125, it says, God has ever preserved a remnant to serve him, Adam, Seth, Enoch, Mithoshela, Noah, Shem, in unbroken line, had preserved from age to age the precious revealings of his will. Unbroken line. Patriarchs and Prophets, 125. And also, I would like to read the reading in 1TG. 1TG number 2 on page 22, it says, As there is but one right way and but one door, and as all Christians do not see alike and do not walk together, could it be that we are all wrong, all going in a wrong direction? No. That could never be as long as the Lord does not forsake the earth. Indeed not. For he must have a people in whom to confide his truth and by whom to save those who choose to go his way. So those who choose to go some other way will in the end discover that the devil, not the Lord, is behind them and that hell and not the kingdom is ahead of them. 1TG number 2, page 22. Now let's go back to our main subject. 12 symbolic code number 2, page 7, and page 8. It says here, Seeing then that the devil had all the religions of the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth represented by the seven heads and ten crown horns on his head, then how much was not the devil's? It was all his. Now, I would like to read to you 2SR. 2SR page 89. The leopard-like beast is a descendant of the four ancient empires. Therefore, he represents the world, but more particularly, the entire Western civilization with their civil and religious systems. The voice of inspiration very plain. The, whatever the symbolization of the leopard-like beast, it is even more particularly pointing to the entire Western civilization with their civil and religious systems. To us are page 89. 
Now let us continue reading. 12 symbolic code, number 2, page 7 and page 8. It was all his. This being true, then for God's true individual people within the church, the earth had indeed become a bottomless pit, a prison house. There was only one way of escape for them, and that was for the for that star to come down from heaven and open the pit. Who is the star? Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, there is Jesus Christ. There is no possible of escape except if Jesus Christ will come down from heaven and open the pit. How did Jesus Christ open the pit at his first advent? He died on the cross. Now, I would like to read 2SR page 69. 2SR page 69. It says, I would like to read the middle portion. Let us read the entire paragraph. The dragon with his seven heads and ten horns with the crowns on the heads appeared at the birth of Christ as previously explained occupies the period parallel with the nondescript beast. The heads are represented by the biblical number seven meaning completeness and embrace every religious system in the days of Christ. As the dragon represents the devil who controls the heads the symbol unmistakably denotes a complete Apostasy. It is not intended to reveal that the pagan system of worship was seeded by the devil or it has never been otherwise. It was the Jewish church that had apostatized and that is what made the biblical number seven heads. Just such an apostasy had gripped the world in the days of Noah and its wickedness made the continuation of the world impossible. Therefore, necessity for the good of mankind brought about the flood. The terrible, the terrible apostasy of the Jews made unavoidable another disaster similar to the dreadful deluge as God could not overthrow the world by water the second time and yet keep his never failing promise to his faithful servant Noah. He sent his son to die in the world's stead. Therefore, the world perish not because of the supreme sacrifice of the Son of God. And the world exists today because Christ arose from the dead. And then go back to page 100. He says, Just such ignorance of God's word in the days of Noah brought about, brought the world to its destruction by water. A similar wicked condition reduced to ashes the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. If in the days of Christ, just such hypocrisy under the appearance of virtue required the life of the Son of God to preserve the world from destruction, what would the outcome be at this present time? In reality, that statement present time is even more applicable in the fulfillment of the prophecy in the days in which we are living in. And then it says, God cannot destroy the world for he has a multitude to save. God cannot destroy the world for God has a multitude to save. Meaning, there is a great multitude under deeply brethren. Destruction is a strange work for a loving, merciful God. But according to the Shepherd's Rod in 1 TG 29, on page 9, it says here, 1 TG 29 on page 9, God in His wisdom knows that it is better to destroy comparatively few, few enemies of truth. That is present truth. The gospel, the present truth under the seventh seal, the last gospel proclamation. That God in His wisdom knows that it is better to destroy comparatively few enemies of truth than to lose the whole world. All the stumbling blocks must be removed. 1 TG 29 page 9. Would you think, brothers and sisters, our situation today, the pigeon divided in di into different groups are fulfilling the will of Jesus Christ? The statement in track number 6, let me read to you. Track number 6 on page 11. Showing that he recognizes only one denomination. There is only one denomination recognized by Jesus Christ as his. Christ said, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John 10 verse 16, the existing disunion among Christians of today. I would like to say the least, the existing disunion 
among Christian, the Bidyan of today is not therefore fulfilling God's, but Satan predetermined purpose. If I am a seventh day Adventist, brothers and sisters, then I saw the situation of the Davidian bickering, quarreling, fighting against its other. It might be that I would like to remain to be seventh day Adventist than to join such movement by ways contradicting its other. Would you think we are not doing stumbling blocks? All the stumbling blocks must be removed. The boundary line is getting nearer and nearer. Let's read again, brothers and sisters. It says, God cannot destroy the world, for he has a multitude to save. But God has no other son for a gift to the church, for Christ is the only begotten son of God. On the first advent of Jesus Christ, such complete apostasy, such great apostasy, that world was preserved because of the supreme sacrifice of the life of the Son of God. But God has no other son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. So the question now, brothers and sisters, then what would be the outcome? It says, what would the outcome be at this present time? Towards our page 100. Brethren, we need to be honest. Honest of our profession of faith. Me of myself, I'm praying every day and meditating and heart to heart and talking to God. If this effort does not come from Him, uh, I'm asking God, please inform us, Lord, because we would not waste our time, our energy, by which in reality we are only contributing infidelity, contributing hindrance, brothers and sisters. But there is a more deep obligation. The more we pray, the more the, there is, brothers and sisters, a deep obligation placed upon our shoulders to preach this gospel. Now, let us go back again to this very important subject. In this subject, I would like to quote to you this reading in 2 SR page 258, saying, My brethren, it says, These words are not against you, for it is God speaking through His word of truth to save you from the bottomless pit. Now tell me, brothers and sisters, let us study closely. What nation represented by that symbolical earth? By which that symbolical earth represents the bottomless pit. Let us read again the statement in track number 5 on page 60 and page 61. Since the bottomless pit of Revelation 20 verse 3 is symbolical of the earth as a prison house during the millennium, then the bottomless pit of Revelation 9 verse 1 being identical must likewise be symbolical of the earth as a prison house at another time. You will say that was fulfilled on the first advent of Jesus Christ. The Jewish nation became the bottomless pit. Is that the particular object in view? Is, or is it the ground world? Now tell me the statement in 12 symbolic code number 2 page 7. It says, let us read again the statement. Seeing then, seeing then that the devil had all the religions of the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth represented by the seven heads and ten crown horns on his head. Remember, the nondescript beast runs parallel or the dragon runs pal parallel with the nondescript beast. It says to us our page 69. The dragon with his seven heads and ten horns with the crown horns with the crowns on the heads appeared at the birth of Christ as previously explained, and occupies the period parallel with the nondescript beast. Now, in our days, what is the description of the dragon today? Brothers and sisters, what is the description of the dragon? Does the red dragon today has no more seven heads? Does the red dragon today has no more ten horns? Think it thoroughly, brethren. As a matter of fact, the shepherds are declared clearly in 2 SR page 76, it says, the crown of 12 stars in the New Testament period. 2 SR page 76. John's vision in the 12th chapter of Revelation deals with two main subjects. Namely, the woman clothed with the sun and the red dragon. 
The latter has been explained. See pages 65 to 69. The symbol of the woman in the New Testament time covers three divisions. First, the apostolic period. Second, her absence from civilization in the wilderness for 1,260 days. Years of papal persecution. Verses 6 to 14. Third, the last period of the church while in conflict with the dragon. Verse 15. Verses 15 to 17. Who is she, the woman, which is in conflict with the dragon? And that dragon, what is the description? Does the dragon no more seven heads? Now, let us go back again, the reading. In 12 Symbolic Code number 2, page 7. It says, Seeing then that the devil had all the religions of the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth represented by the seven heads and ten crown horns on his head, to repeat again, brothers and sisters, the only beast recorded in the Bible by which the ten horns had been crowned, it is the leopard like this. But it is attached to the dragon in this reading. Seeing then that the devil has had all the religions of the earth and all the kingdoms of the earth represented by the seven heads and ten crown horns on his head, then how much was not the devil's, it was all his. This being true, then for God's true individual people within the church, the earth had indeed become a bottomless pit, a prison house. So where is God's people had been prison? They had been prison within the church. And that is why the message in Isaiah 63, whoever, let's read again, track, answer number 4, page 23. That whoever continues to hold his people in bondage and in ignorance of his truth, will he tread in his anger and trample them in his fury and sprinkle their blood upon his garments, thereby staining all his raiment and thus setting his people free. Answer number 4, page 23. They were keeping God's people in bondage. And of course, that is pointing to those who are in the leadership. Because according to the shepherd's run, in 1 TG number 18, on page 17, what a fearful responsibility rests upon those who carelessly handle the word of God, who pose as soul guardians over the people, but who in reality are guarding that no soul escape landing in hell. Both they and their abominations will fall in the ditch Indeed, if any reform is needed in Christendom, it is certainly needed worse in this one line. But brethren, you cannot hold God's people in darkness forever because there is a boundary line. And do not repeat the mistake of the Jews. According to track number 5, page 55 and page 56. Under deeply, brethren, to repeat again, you cannot hold God's people in darkness forever. The shepherds are declared clearly in 1 TG, 51 page 3 and 4. It says, look at the progress the world has made and look at the stupidity with the church is cultivating. Yes, I say cultivating because it seems that rather than bemoaning the fact of not having added or discarded a doctrine and rather than encouraging the people to be on the watch for God's visitations, they are making it their business to keep the lighty from coming in contact with God's messengers and His progressive truth with meat in due season which with God messages for today. Anything that does not originate in their own conventions, the lighty are told to have nothing to do with it. This they do simply because they themselves do not accept the truths God sends. And because if any of their congregation come in contact with and accept it, they naturally will have to join truth wherever truth is. So it is their cheap business to keep the lighty in darkness and in fear that someone is to deceive them if they expose themselves to anything that their ministers do not approve. And this attitude is prevalent among the media today. But, brothers and sisters, there is a boundary line which we cannot pass. And that boundary line is about finish. Now, let us read again the statement in track number 5, page 60 and 61. In page 61, it says, This implicitly biblical interpretation of the star, the K, and the bottomless pit, reveals that the earth at Christ's first advent had become a prison house 
for God's people and that Christ came to open it in order to save them. He says, Jesus Christ opened it in order to save them. The very fact that God's people are vested with the power to keep open the bottomless pit, then should they be defeated, the pit would be shut and would become a prison house from which there would be no escape unless it be reopened. If God's people will be defeated, then the pit would be shut again. Now, let us read to us our page 97. It says, By the divinely called movement and aided by the writings of the spirit prophecy, God's intention was to keep the deadly one on the head. But the prophetic word of God says his deadly wound was healed. Since God's holy word declares that the wound was healed, and as the prophecy cannot be broken, it is positive that the wound is healed. But a protestantism by obedience to God's word is what inflicted the wound, then true protestantism only can keep the painful sore on the head. If the wound is healed, then it is evident that they to whom God had committed the message for a perishing world had been defeated in the same manner as every movement since the world began. It is a most wonderful thing to note how the old enemy has succeeded in defiling the church in every age through its leadership. The highest human intellect has been continually led into error and thus have served Satan to their own downfall. Will God's people never profit by these historical and biblical facts? Are not these things written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come? God by his holy word commands, Cease ye from men whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Isaiah 2 verse 22. Ponder deeply, brothers and sisters, what the shepherd's rod publications or the, the word of God are plainly telling us. What does it mean by the wound was healed? Indicates that they to whom the gospel is committed had been defeated by the devil. Now let us go first to the seventh day Adventist church. Because that what we, under, we understand, right? It is the seventh day Adventist church that added to the seven heads of the leopard like this in 1929. February 11, 1929. What is the statement in track number five? If the church had been defeated. Then, that modern Palestine became the bottomless pit. History repeats of itself. What is the modern Palestine? Now, I would like to read 1SR. Let's read 1SR page 157 and 158. It says, Quoting Exodus 15, verse 14 to 16, The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestine. Then dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab trembling shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone. Till thy people pass over, O Lord. Till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. The land of Canaan represents the land into which the church at this present time came into existence, namely the United States of America. The name Palestina means land of strangers. The United States is composed of strangers, people from many nations and races. Dukes of Edom refers to the same class as those mentioned in Isaiah 63, as previously explained. The name Moab means Pujaina, or forefathers. Now ponder deeply, brothers and sisters. Do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church had been defeated by the devil? Now, for example, when does the wound heal? February 11, 1929. What does it mean? The spiritual side saying, in page 97, that the church had been defeated by the devil. If the church had been defeated by the devil, what happened to the modern Palestine became the bottomless pit. Now, what is the statement given in 2TG? I would like to read 2TG number 13. Again, the statement. It says, so let us read this statement. It says, 2TG number 13, page 10. Christ therefore came to open the pit and to let the captives go free. To such a world was the Lord of heaven sent, and when he came, he immediately declared, Luke 4, verse 18 to 19. That is Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, which is not completely fulfilled at the first advent of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the perfect fulfillment of Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2 must be at the time by which supposed to be the place by which God's sanctuary had been placed 
had been defeated by the devil, trodden underfoot, became the bottomless pit, and there is no escape unless it will be reopened according to the voice of inspiration. And the only one who can reopen brothers and sisters is the gospel. And that is the present truth under the seventh seal. And only those who accepted the gospel that Jesus Christ will let them free. That Jesus Christ will rescue them of being in bondage. As stated in answerer number 4, page 23. Now, I would like to go back to track number 5. Here in track number 5, on page 60, it says here, Since the bottomless pit of Revelation 20, verse 3, is symbolical of the earth as a prison house during the millennium, that is 1,000 years, then the bottomless pit of Revelation 9, verse 1, being identical, what does it mean by the word identical? That is the same period of time. The only difference is that the anti uh, the antitype is 1,000 years. The type is 1,000 days. Now, let us go back first to our subject, brothers and sisters, concerning the 12 figurative months. And we will show to you, let me see in our little uh, diagram, concerning the 12 figurative months. So here on um, number 12, slide 1. Since we already read in track number 5, page 74, brothers and sisters, track number 5, page 74, that the given clue is the first six figurative months from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion. From Christ's baptism to his crucifixion. So that is the given clue. Therefore, the divine formula must be 1,260 days divided by 6 equals 210. So it's Symbolical month consists of 210 days. 210 times 6 equals 1,260 days. Now, how about the five symbolical months? Now, let us multiply. 210 times 5, that is 1,050 days. 210 times 5 equals 1,050 days. And I would like to show to you a simple illustration. To show that it is identical with that 1,000 years. So, when does the... This is 1,000 years. We called it millennium. The millennium. When does the millennium begins? On the year of Jubilee. Now, let us read 2SR. 2SR page 252. 2SR page 252. A computation of like manner was employed to define the year of Jubilee. Say the Lord, and thou shalt number seven Sabbath of years unto the seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Leviticus 25 verse 8. The fiftieth year, while the land rested, being also a type of the millennium, showing that the land should keep a Sabbath rest, a like computation is used. Therefore, at the beginning of the thousand years is the commencement of the jubilee in its antitype. So that is very plain. So at the commencement of the millennium, it commenced on the year, on the year of Jubilee. Now the shepherds declared clearly in track number 5, page 60 and 61, that that prison house, the bottomless pit, so the whole earth at this time, whole earth became the bottomless pit. Bottomless pit, whole earth. But there must be a symbolical earth that is identical. Now, I would like to show to you, brothers and sisters, this is the symbolical earth, whole symbolical earth. The whole symbolical earth became the bottomless pit. When? 1,000 days. It could not be 1,000 years. The word identical meaning the same number. For example, if you will say identical twin, meaning both of them, either both male or both female. That what it means by the word identical. Now look at the five symbolical months. 210 times 5 equals 1,050. Now 1,050 minus 1,000 equals 50. What is number 50? Jubilee. Jubilee. Therefore, at the end of the 1,000 days, that is the Jubilee. It is reversed in the Antitype, because at the commencement of the Jubilee, commenced the millennium. 
But at the end of 1,000 days, commence the jubilee. Because God's people, brothers and sisters, would be on the prison house 1,000 days. But at the end of 1,000 days, they must be released. And whoever that will keep God's people in bondage, they will be slaughtered. Brothers and sisters, that is that it what means by the proclamation of the year of Jubilee, which is identical. Now, I would like to read to you in 1 TG number 46. 1 TG number 46 on page 6 and page 7. Thus said the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause that to inherit the desolate heritages. We know that God's help is channeled through inspiration, right? In 2 TG 24, it says here, page 22, If they do awake to their poverty, it will be the greatest miracle since the beginning of the world. I say it will be the greatest because they feel no need of God's help through inspiration. Therefore, God's help is channeled through inspiration. That is very plain. The same with the statement in track number 6 on page 80. It says, Therefore, brethren, settle it once and forever that with the Lord's help. What is the Lord's help? Inspiration. You will no longer be carried away. By winds of doctrine that are created and driven by the spirit of error, not by the spirit of truth, but that you will always look for and stand by the inspired word of God, the testimony of Jesus delivered to you by the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 12, 17, Revelation 19, 10, that you will hear the rod and who hath appointed it. Micah 6, verse 9. The spirit of truth. And in our study, more particularly to the paradox of the ages, the spirit of truth turned away in the United States of America. In 2 TG 22, page 22, God's spirit have been, been silenced in the north country. What is the north country? Babylon. But there are two Babylons, 2SR 245. The Babylon in the antediluvian world and the Babylon in the postdiluvian world. The Babylon in the antediluvian world in the antitype that is the continent of Europe. But the Babylon in the postdiluvian world represent the United States of America. The two hornbees, two symbolic code, number one, page eight. Two symbolic code, number one, page eight. As the fulfillment of this prophecy is yet future, we cannot now tell who will then be the head king of the north of this prophetic nation, modern Babylon, that is symbolized by the two horn bees. What is the two horn bees? United States of America, the modern Babylon, the north country. Now it says here to TG 22:22, God's spirit having been silenced in the north country must denote that the messages of God in the north country were generally rejected, especially the one of the fourth chariot. What is the fourth chariot? Laodiceans. Track number 2, page 34. It did not say one of the four chariots, but one of the fourth chariot. The praise one of meaning two things. Therefore, Laodicean is divided into two objects. Typical Laodicean and antitypical Laodicean. The typical Laodicean, they are the Seventh-day Adventist Church proclaiming the judgment that pertains to the dead and the antitypical Laodicean, they are the Davidian proclaiming the judgment that pertains to the living and they are represented by the seven antitypical brothers of David. Although the shepherds did not flatly say who of them is it the typical or the antitypical, but it is not a big deal. The most important part in this declaration, it says, which caused the spirit of truth to turn away and to bring truth no more through them to be silent there. Where? In the United States of America. And that, therefore, there is not to be expected any truth through them. 2 TG 22, 22. It is um, either an ignorance or foolishness to expect any messages in the United States of America after B.T. Hunter died. No more progressive truth, brothers and sisters, because the author of the truth, he himself declared, I will no longer send any truth in the United States of America. 
there will be no more truth to originate in the United States of America because the United States of America became the bottomless pit, the modern Palestine. And we are now in the fulfillment of that prophecy. It says here in 1 TJ 46, 7, it matters not because in verse 9, thou, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, prisoners in the bottomless pit, it matters not where God's people be, nor under what circumstances they be placed, they shall nevertheless all hear his servants proclaiming the year of final jubilee, and all are to be let out free, all are to share this great ever-increasing spiritual feast. 1 TJ 46, 7. Brothers and sisters, this message had been gradually given by God unto us. But to repeat again, you can reject the message, you can ignore the message, you can ridicule the message, you can laugh, but you cannot hinder the fulfillment of the message that we proclaim. This message will be fulfilled to the very letter. We will continue this subject, brethren, on our next episode to completely finish this very important subject by which the time predicted that some will be made invulnerable to death and those who continue God's people to hold them in darkness, hindering the message, it was illustrated, the sinners in Zion. That is very plain. In 2 as our page 101, it says, Peter saw a time when God will judge the church for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What would be the end of him who enters not the ark of safety, but dares bar the way of others? As the prophet saw the day of vengeance upon the sinner in Zion, and the Lord returning from the slaughter, he asked. To us are page 101. Who are they? The sinner in Zion. Zion represents headquarters. Brothers and sisters. And it says here in White House Recruiter, page 53. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion at headquarters. Now let us study closely. Is there anyone that will be left in the headquarters at the time when Jesus Christ will make a clean riddance of the purification of the church? Stated in answer number 4, page 23 and page, or page 22 and 23. Well, I think the best answer that can we give is that let us follow the attitude of the Ninevites. They defeated the prophecy. All of them repented. But if we will not repent, then we are only forcing Jesus Christ to destroy all who are found on that headquarters by which they make that headquarters a bottomless pit so that none should escape landing in hell. May the good Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. We love you, brethren. Hope to see you in God's kingdom. Thank you very much for listening. Have a beautiful, wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.